Hello everyone, my name is Tyler, and this week on Unity Particle Systems we will be talking about how to create a uh, basic fireball that you can kind of see here. Um, so there's two parts of the system, there's the kind of ball part of the fireball, and then there's the fiery trail that it can kind of leave behind. Um, and today we'll be kind of just talking about the basics of how to implement this, and then I can talk about a little bit more kind of additional details that you may want to add to it. But uh, let's go over to our default particle system and actually start trying to make this. Um, so probably one of the first things that you want to do is you want to go over to your render and then change the texture. Unity has some pretty nice ones um, in its default project, so I'm just going to use one of those. Um, there's plenty of other textures that you could make or use um, that might make it a little bit better, but I'm just going with the ones that are provided. Um, so then the second thing that we probably want to do is change the shape of the actual uh, emitter. And let's change that to a sphere to kind of match our, uh, our fireball. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Um, the second thing we probably want to do is uh, greatly reduce the speed so we can have kind of more of like a, uh, a kind of like constant uh, kind of ball effect where we're just kind of spawning particles uh, from the sphere than making it look like an actual fireball. So uh, let's change the, uh, probably, let's see, let's, let's change the size a little bit. Uh, and then probably the next thing that we want to do is give it a little bit of uh, variation in rotation. So let's do that. Another thing that we probably want to do since it's uh, since it is fire, and this is kind of a more violent effect, we want the lifetime to be a lot more uh, quicker. So you'll kind of see what difference uh, that makes here. Then let's uh, change the duration a bit. Um, so as you can see, um, when you have a long lifetime, it's kind of like a more slow, kind of like gradual effect. And when you have a shorter lifetime, it looks a lot more kind of violent and quick. And we'll keep uh, we'll keep adding to this kind of effect. So uh, let's see, what else should we do? Let's uh, let's see, let's see. Let's probably change the color since the the kind of popping effect is quite quite annoying. Let me turn that off real quick. Oops. And let's do it to our preset. Let's change this alpha to be a little bit uh, a little bit closer and a little bit brighter. And then we'll just remove that since we don't really need it. And then you can see that the fire kind of fades in a bit and fades out. Probably put this a little bit closer. Actually, um, probably want to actually. Yeah, let's let's remove the speed uh, the speed variable for now, and then kind of uh, kind of simulate it a little bit by velocity over lifetime. So let's have a little bit uh, random, but we don't need it to be quite that fast. Let's put it at point one. also have the fire rotate a bit um, over its lifetime, so it can have a little bit more interesting effect. Let's also randomize that a bit. doesn't need to be too fast, let's just put this to 15. Put that that way. And you can see that the, that the fire is actually a little bit bigger um, than we want it to be, because the particles are kind of uh, a little bit more spread out when they're emitting. So let's make our sphere a little bit smaller, and then uh, we could also kind of play with how many particles are being spawned and what uh, size those particles are. So let's, let's play around a bit with uh, how many particles are spawned. So now we're kind of getting closer to that uh, actual ball effect for the fireball. And then you can uh, kind of tweak a couple more things that I'll, I'll talk about oof, later on. Uh, excuse me. And uh, But for now, let's just uh, go over to the trail effect. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. I'm going to do it um, in a relatively simple way where I'm going to basically just kind of fake uh, a trail effect, where I'm just going to kind of attach a cone emitter to the, uh, to the actual fireball part and then have fire particles emit off of it, kind of like you see in this one. But the way that you probably should actually do it for this game, unless it's kind of a static fireball, is you probably would want to create um, a trail emitter. And you can do that uh, a couple of different ways if you want to learn how. Um, I'm pretty sure I talked about it in my tutorial series, but if you have a little bit, uh, if you have other questions on how to do it, 
uh, feel free to message me or comment in the video, and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. But let's let's move on with this uh, with this cone effect. We don't need it to be nearly this large. So let's just kind of scale it down, and then uh, let's map the direct duration match the particle's parent system, and then let's also have the lifetime be quite short. Um, we're also going to want to rotate this um, so that. Actually, no. Instead of rotating it, let's uh, let's do this by uh, velocity over lifetime because it's a little bit cleaner. Okay. We also need to change the size of the particles because they're quite big. And now let's give it some velocity over lifetime. So depending on which direction, oop, that's not where I want it. <laughs> okay, let's reset the position for that. There we go. Now it's in our fireball. There we go, that's better. Okay, so now let's give it some velocity. Um, we're also going to have it vary a bit, so that's why we're doing random uh, over two curves. So that's uh, more or less in the direction that we want it. Let's have it go a tiny bit faster, and then also have it a little bit less variation, because we do want it to move in this, uh, this kind of general direction. Now let's give it some other kind of, uh, kind of very small um, variation in the x and z direction, just so our trail's a little bit more lively. Um, that might be a, too, a bit too much, actually. Let's reduce it a bit. There we go. Now let's change our texture to match the fire particle that we're using. And of course, let's change the, uh, not the size by speed, the color over lifetime to match, again, the particle that we're using. That since we don't need it. And you can notice that I'm not actually modifying the color because the texture itself has color. If your texture is grayscale, you'll probably need to modify the color um, in here a bit or the modify the actual file itself. Now let's also give this some starting rotations, make it a little bit more, uh, have a little bit more variation in it. I could also probably increase the size a bit since it's a bit small. Too big though, since we want it to be a little bit smaller than our fireball. Um, and let's also have some size over lifetime, so you can see that the fire is kind of shrinking as it goes away from the ball. But we don't want it to get too small because it looks a little odd. So let's have it, let's say right there. Could probably give it a little bit more speed. There we go. Those off, and then the last thing we could do is give it a little bit of angular velocity. So let's do that, and that's more or less how you do uh, a very, very, very basic uh, fireball effect. Um, there's just two kind of um, ideas to it. You want to have the actual ball part of the fireball, and then you want to have a trail of fire kind of going behind it. And uh, that's basically how you do it. If you have any questions or if you want to see me uh, kind of add a little bit more detail to this effect, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, but otherwise, that's more or less it for uh, this week's video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.